Hey, Sugar. I'm back once again to come and talk to you guys. Um, I just want to first say hello to all of my old subscribers, and I want to say hello and a welcome to all of my new subscribers. I want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for coming and joining me on my channel. Um, you have blessed me with your spirit. You have blessed me with your kind words and just a little bit of your time. And I hope that you continue to enjoy my channel. If it's anything, questions or tags that you want me to do, just let me know um, and I will do them. Um, it's a lot of things about my life I have already shared. But um, if it's something that you want to know and I feel comfortable talking about it, I will. And uh, with that being said, hey, sister, this is... Um, it's Freaky Funky Friday, and I am grateful, and I am humbled, and I am truly blessed. For one, I want to start off by saying, you know, today was a day for me. It was kind of rocky, and some things happened that really, really got into my spirit. And um, because I'm trying to be a, a not trying to be, I want to be. A better person I want to be a stronger person a more kinder more uh, sympathetic and um, I'm always emotional so that's a given um, but I just want to be everything that I can be um, in life I have a lot of decisions that I've made in life that I am now thinking about well not that I'm just thinking about them but some things have been on my mind lately and um, the word that I've been getting for the last three days is um, just be patient. You are right where you are for a reason. God knows everything about you and you are right where he wants you to be. And with that being said, I just continue to pray for his strength, his guidance, his encouragement, his love, his mercy, his grace, and everything, his favor, everything that is of him. And if it's from him, I can't go wrong. Um, like I've always said, everybody's not going to like you. You're not going to be able to do everything to please people. And life gets lonely sometimes because people that are against you um, get separated from you. And you wonder why, what did I do? Um, and you start to feel lonely. You start to feel by yourself. But just know this, and I'm talking to a few people that have come to me or have said something about this. And I'm not going to say your names. You know who you are. But just know this. In those times that you feel like you're alone, know that you're not alone because God is right there with you. He's sitting there with his arms around you because you are his child. Just as you cradled your child when they felt um, some kind of way, how you consider you know, their feelings, how you sit back and you, you do whatever you can to make sure your child is okay. He's doing the same thing for us and you have to just sit back and just let him guide you and just continue to work things out in your favor. Um, he will put people in your life that will come to um, to give you discipline, especially when it's something that you need to learn, um, which is what's happening with me, um, learning to say no and to deal with it, learning to do without when I don't need it, um, and wait on him to do it for me. Um, Learning that um, you can't trust everybody, but you trust people until they give you a reason not to trust them. So, with that being said, I love y'all. I say it all the time, and I don't think you can ever, ever tell somebody too many times that you love them. I'm here to talk. Y'all know I like to talk. I'm here to encourage. And just know that you're a blessing. You're a blessing. God created you just for this moment. You are still here on earth, and the things that you're going through is for a reason. We don't know what that reason is, and we don't know when the answer is going to come, but it will come. And when that day comes, I want you to sit back and you smile, and you be like, you know, thank you, Lord. So what I do now is I tell him thank you in advance. Thank you for the strength that you're going to give me. Thanks for the smile that I'm going to place upon my face because I know that you have the answer to all of my problems. Thank you for 
the people that you're going to send in my life to help me with anything that I choose to do in life. Thank you for the prayers that are answered and thank you for those that have been locked away in your vault saying, uh-uh, that's not for you. I got something better. I thank you, my Father God. I thank you, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank you for the whooping that I got today. Letting me know that you, that God is all that I need. And everybody is not trustworthy. And that's been one of my fears, y'all, lately, is, is to come on this platform and run into some people that just don't mean me any good. So I continue to be myself. I continue to be strong. And I can't run away from the negativity. Um, it hurts. And me, I've always been that type of person that um, negativity, it does something to me. But I am a whole lot better than what I used to be. But I am also trying not to go down the wrong road. Um, I made a video the other day. Yesterday, I was out and about. And driving in traffic, it's like every kunk noon, every bubble brain, every whatever you want to call them. Every wrong decision making person was on the road and with me at the same time. And, um, you know, I could have just blew my horn left, right, and then some and, and been jumping and weaving it, but I didn't do that. But I did. I was ranting. I made that video and I think it's still, I don't know if I uploaded it or it's still on my phone. I think it's on my, I think it's on my phone. Um, but it was just like, you know what, mm -mm. I mean, people drive crazy, and, and what makes it so bad is, I was listening at the radio, and there was a young lady and her boyfriend traveling, 3 o'clock in the morning, not sure where they were coming from, but this guy was driving erratic. I don't know what his problem was, whether he was intoxicated, sleepy, um, just being a butthole or what. But he slammed her to their car head on, and she died, and the passenger of her car is in critical condition. Now, use your noodle, people. I want to ask this question. Is a few hours of fun drinking alcohol, whatever it may be, is it worth the moment that you get behind the wheel and drive a car and can possibly take somebody's life and then your life is over also? Is it worth that? I'm not, y'all, I may come across as a good or two shoes and that's not it. That's not it and I promise you that's not it. Is I just get concerned because we are in a state in this world that we can't make decisions like that too all I mean, yeah, we know we got to get home, but you know what? There comes a time when you have to say, okay, I'm not going to get pissed or drunk till I can't put one toenail in my shoe. Okay, I don't want to get that drunk that when I put my shoe on, I don't put it in the wrong way and the, the front, the pointed part is in the back and I'm trying to squeeze my foot in that shoe. You are twisted beyond twisted when you do stuff like that. When you go, you go to pull up your panties and you got them on top of your skirt and you don't even know it. You know, don't get that twisted. If you're going to get twisted like that, provide somebody to drive you home or make sure that you get from point A to point B. Because two, And I know God is the author and finisher of all things in life. And if she passed away, it was her time to go. But you got to think about, okay, she died. Then you got two other people that's got to live through this. The person that caused the accident and the passenger. They got to live through this. And it's hard, but we know God is going to be with them. But can you imagine how their lives are going to change? All for a split-second decision. Even if he wasn't intoxicated and he was just driving crazy just because, because a lot of people do it. They drive fast just because, just because your car said go up to 140 miles an hour don't mean that you need to do 140 miles an hour. When the speed limit says 65. 
it's a lot of things that we go through and um, we have to stop and think about it. <laughs> Y'all excuse me. So today has been one of those days. Um, I saw a blessed queen. I saw her tag and it was a really good tag. It was a, a tag about me is what it was called. And I think not to be nosy, but I think that's a tag that um, can be done. And it gives you kind of like an insight as to how, you know, I know everybody that may like some things, but it was just a really nice tag and asking some really simple questions, but not something that's going to really, really pry into somebody's personal life, you know. Um, Thrifty Queen B, I just watched one of her videos and she did one about a makeup palette that she bought. And um I'm I'm dirt cheap. Her name is Thrifty Queen B, but I don't know. She be buying some stuff with some prices that I just I'm I'd be like, okay, um I have never paid ten ninety nine for a for face makeup, period. Ever. My face primer was um almost eight dollars and I want to put that sucker back <laughs> yeah I know I'm cheap I, I know it y'all but it's just certain things I'm just not accustomed to spending a whole lot of money on I'm sorry and I don't want to get addicted to makeup because that can be an expensive habit and that's why I didn't get addicted to buying um that human hair, Malaysian and all, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get addicted to that. I don't. I was given some bundles of hair. Well, I wasn't given, but um, I have some hair, but I don't want to get, I don't want to get stuck on doing that. So if that's something that I decide to do in the future, buy that hair, it's going to be like that. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm working on some things. Y'all know um, we moved in November. And um, uh, I had to start over. I mean, whole house full of furniture. Um, and just it's just been not a roller coaster ride, but it's been a ride. And it's been... I can say, uh, from the most point, a pleasant one, watching how God works and how you can speak things into existence. And um, my camera keeps freezing up, and I don't know why. But um, just watching, and I've done a few things with the house, um, and I shopped cheap, thrift store, whatever, as best I could. Um, but I don't know. I may do a video, and but that's kind of like showing off. I mean, if somebody asks the question, then yeah. But yeah, I take that back because I don't. I don't show off like that. I mean, I'm all for decorating. That's pretty much what I did. I got a lot of DIY projects, like I did the one with um, fixing my um, my sink faucet. And I have a mirror that I had up here on my wall, and it fell and it broke. So the corner, there's a big chunk of glass missing out of it about this much. But the frame, there's a, ch a chunk piece of the frame, but I just could not part with my frame, y'all. I just couldn't. And um, I think, I don't know, I think I can go show y'all that right quick. I'm on my laptop, y'all. I'm sitting in the living room. <gasps> Ooh, I thought it caught off. I thought it cut off, y'all. I'm going to show it to y'all right quick. You look wore out. My baby in there frying pork chops and making cabbage. All I had to do was mention cabbage, and she was like, yeah, I'll cook it for you, mama. Okay, this is my mirror. I hope y'all can see it. And you see how I hung, oh my arm, I hung that little picture up there on top of it. 
that is actually covering the piece that's broke. So I kind of created a little, little something, gave it a little, you know, a different look. And for my husband, he liked the way that happened, the way I did it and the way it looked. And this frame, can y'all see the frame? This is a frame that was, it had a picture on the inside, but um, the glass got broke. So I had another picture, and this a little canvas picture that I put on the inside of that, and I created another picture, and I just hung it up there on top of the mirror. So this is in my den, and this is the trio of that little picture that is hanging up there. And there are music and movie themed pictures because this is what we do in the den. So that's that wall and that's the living room. So I've changed it around and I said I wasn't going to show it but I guess I lied again. So I've changed it around and I put, I know it's blurry, the two pieces back together of that sectional and then I have the big piece over here and my two picture frames that I used to have over here on the side of the fireplace I put them over there and I moved my mirrors and my candle holders over here so it's just like I get into a mood now these pictures I have over here this is the table that I bought with the little rug I don't know if y'all can see it. And yes, these pictures, I got them. They were on clearance at Family Dollar for $3 a piece, which it matched just perfect. And my little bamboo tree in the corner, I found at the flea market for $20. And then these pictures, I found at Family Dollar for, um, I think they were $3 also. They were either 3 or 6 no, these were three, and the other ones on the other wall were six. And then that's a picture of myself and my husband. So, just a little change, guys, that I did. Just to make things a little different. I get in moves like that, especially when I'm in a cleaning and decorating mood. Um, my husband gave me, told me to you know buy myself something and that's what I that's what I bought um, I was supposed to buy me a sewing machine but I didn't do it I don't regret it but I do want me a sewing machine um, I don't know I want me a sewing machine I do I just I don't know I guess it just was not a priority at the moment but Jalen, what I told you. Thank you. Um, I just don't like my kids in the room a lot of times when I'm talking about certain things. So, yeah. But I do want to get me a sewing machine because I got a, it's an idea. When I get things in my head to do, y'all, it drives me nuts until I can actually do it. But every dime that he's given me, to do what I want for myself, I didn't, I, I just, I did it for the house. Because when I tell y'all we didn't have anything, if y'all go back to my video when we first moved in, we didn't have a stitch of furniture, we didn't have nothing. Because I wanted to start over. I had been through so much within the last two and a half years, I started completely over. We didn't even have mattresses, we didn't have anything. But you know, by God's grace, and he, he once again told me, if you speak it and believe it in your heart, it shall come to pass. And it did. Because I told my husband, I said, we're going to get the house. It's ours. I'm not worrying about it. We got the house with no problem. Um, I said, even though we don't have furniture, we're going to have furniture. And we're going to have it before the holiday. And we had furniture before the holiday. Um, I didn't have a bed to sleep on for a while, but before the holiday, I got a bed and I got me a living room set because my my goal was to um, break bread with family and friends. You know, it was a 
that kind of time for me. I just I get in a mood like that sometimes where I want to share and be around family and friends. I get in a cooking mood and I know, you know, food make people feel better. Good music make people feel better. You know, soft spoken words and kind feelings and, and all of that stuff make people feel better no matter what's going on in their life. So that's what I wanted to do. And I'm praying that one day God give me enough money to do some things that I have that I want to do for my sisters um, that I meet here on YouTube or whether it be Facebook. It's some things that I want to do seriously. And, you know, if it's God's will, I know it'll work out. I know he's going to do it. When, where, how, and who he's going to use, I have no idea. But um, I'm going to keep speaking it, and I know he's going to do it. And it won't be me taking food out of my children's mouth, I know that. But it's going to work out because I want it to be a time when women can come and just let their hair down and relax and have a good time. You know, our spirits get broken sometimes. Our hearts get broken. Our feelings get all messed up and our thoughts in our heads and we don't think clearly and we just kind of sometimes all of our bricks fall over on us and we kind of give up sometimes. So I want to bring that special time that when we reach that point that we can come together as women as we should. There's no judgment. There's no looking at them like, mm -hmm. no, I don't do that. Everybody boo-boo stink, okay? Everybody. Everybody got something that ain't always clean in the milk. So, I don't want any of that. I get fed up and I rant, yes, but I don't want to go around beating up on nobody. I'm just speaking what's aggravating me. I'm not calling no names. I'm not doing any of that. I just want women to get together, to support each other, to love on each other as much as we can. It's an empowering thing to have somebody say, um, I've had somebody say, I really and truly thank God that I found your channel. Y'all, I'm just little old me. And that just really, really fills me and it makes me feel like I'm 10 feet tall. To know that just some of the words that come out of my mouth has done something to somebody's spirit that make them feel a little better. Thank you, God. And I know it ain't nobody but him. I can't take credit for it. But whatever it is he give me, whatever I have been through, whatever words come out of my mouth, um, as long as they are positive, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. So my fight is to continue to be encouraging. And I have my days. Today was a day where I was like this. You know, I wanted to slap. That was my what you say moment. Yeah, I know y'all hear me say, what you say? Yeah, that's when, I, when my head get turned. Yeah, what? That's the what you say moment. So whenever you hear me say a rant is coming on, it's called my what you say moment. Talking When I'm talking to you guys and, I'm, you know, we're having a good time, that's my hey sugar. You know, that's that, that sweet and you adding that sugar to it, that hey sugar. Um, that's my hey sugar moment. So this is my hey sugar moment. And um, I have something I want to read. I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Charles Stanley is. And I will show you his picture. Okay. Um, he has daily devotionals. And... Um, Oh, crud, I done lost my page. Hold on. Lord, Corey said he want a pork chop. Can you hear me say, I want chicken. He and pork chop. His ministry, Dr. Charles Stanley, his ministry is called In Touch. Okay, so you can go to his channel, In Touch Ministries. I think it's In Touch Ministries dot org or dot com. Yeah, dot org. Hey Corey, and you can sign up for his daily devotionals, and they send you once a month these little booklets, 
and he his topics in this one is about hope within how good is good enough and born for a purpose okay I don't think you can see it Wait a minute. it's all going to light see and it's probably talking about some more things but I haven't read it all the way yet but it was something that caught my eye and I just want to read it right quick um, it says transformation Jesus indwelling presence enables each believer to become the person that God intended for him or her to be even though you may feel as if you're far from this goal as long as you keep learning and applying the truth of the scriptures you will increasingly become more like Jesus spiritual transformation and growth are achieved not by trying harder but by submitting to Christ and allowing him to express himself through you I can't say it no better than that I can't and there is so much more that can be said allowing him to express himself through you submitting to Christ and allowing him to express himself through you now that's submission that's giving in that's I love that I absolutely love that because and it says now this one is called glory see he's got these little subtitles I hope y'all can see it. I had to tilt it this way that so y'all could see it. That one is called Glory at the Top. <sighs> glory. Christ in you is your hope of glory. That's Colossians Colossians 1, 27. Although we receive glimpses of scriptures of what awaits us in heaven, we'll be amazed when we step across the threshold and see our Savior face to face. As children of God, we are we are fellow heirs with him Romans 8 16 through 17 and will enjoy the honor and rewards he will give us for obedience and faithful service because Jesus lives in us who also have the assurance that he will make us sufficient in every circumstance not some he will make us sufficient in every circumstance his riches are available for all areas of our lives all not some but all now that's what I got to learn all so what that, that means it don't matter what is going on he say you can have it you gotta have and they say uh, you gotta have faith the size of a mustard seed you gotta have faith and can you imagine if you have more faith than a bag of flour can you imagine the blessings that you can give, the things that can happen in your life and for other people? Thank you, God. His riches are available for all areas of our lives, regardless of the need. If you require understanding and guidance, the treasure of wisdom and knowledge are, he are hidden in Christ. I'm going to say that again. If you require understanding and guidance the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ so for all of you that think that there's another way to Christ mm -mm. if you're struggling financially all the wealth of the world is his that Psalms 24 and 1 when a task is beyond your ability or a trial seems unbearable he is your strength. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. The Lord knows exactly what you should do and is willing to guide you in every situation. I could keep reading that, just that one paragraph over and over and over until you just get it. Just to hear those words and know that those scriptures are from the Bible. His, his word is true and it don't lie. And if he's saying that his riches are available for all areas of your life, that's exactly what he means. So that means I can have my my sewing machine. Even though I didn't buy it, he's going to provide the opportunity again. And when that opportunity comes, I am going to seize it. 
Yeah, he already knew what time is this. He knows that whatever I want to do as far as a women's retreat, and I call it um, whatever it is, he's going to provide it. I'm doing so, I want to do something for people. I don't want to do something that's going to hurt somebody. I want to do something that's going to give you strength, something that's going to give you that energy to move forward. Janae, he messed with the TV. Something that's going to help you to say, okay, thank you, Lord, for that peace, for that word that you have given me that is living down inside of me that I can take with me every second of my life from this day forward until the next time that I come before you to receive your word and your blessing, to get my cup filled to the rim of your word, of your food, of the blood of life from my Lord and Savior. I thank you, God. That's what I want, y'all. And if this is it, me being on YouTube, coming and talking to you guys like this, this is what I do. And I ask God to remove all hindering spirits, to continue to build me up, to continue to guide me so that I can do what it is he set out for me to do. There's a fire down inside of me, and I just cannot put it out. I cannot put it out. And I just thank y'all. I love y'all. All the beautiful shades of skin that I see on you ladies, whether it's with makeup or without, the long hair, the natural hair, the hair weave, all the curves on your body, all the everything, we are beautiful things. And we cannot be duplicated. We cannot be duplicated. I don't care how many facelifts. I don't care. None of that. I don't care. I am a designer original. My father created me. And he did not create another. I wouldn't care if you twins, triplets, quadruplets, whatever. You're still an individual. There is something about you that sets you apart from everybody else. And not to call in the name, but y'all know who you are. All of you that have hit me up, that have said that you have felt lonely, that you feel like you're by yourself, you're not by yourself. It feels that way because I feel that way sometimes. But when I think about it, I sit back and I think about it. I don't have a relationship with my, with my birth sisters, but God has given me y'all. For everything that the devil takes away from you, God will give you that double. And I have sisters, and he has given me double that. He has given me double that, triple that. Y'all are my sisters. I have a brother that's on here. And I don't mean by we came from the same parents. But we did. Because we come from God himself. And there's no better parent. There's no better creator than him. I thank y'all. I love y'all to pieces. His grace is sufficient. Perhaps the greatest benefit of our union with Christ is the privilege of living moment by moment in an intimate relationship with him. Anytime, day or night, we can enter into a private conversation with him. Who is him? Jesus Christ. He is the only one that we can go to to get to heaven and to get to God. Is an ever present friend. Jesus is an ever present friend who knows us more intimately than any human being ever could. Nothing can separate us from him because he has taken up permanent residence within us. Permanent, not temporary. No matter how you run from him, he is there. Everything that you do in life, he is there. For the non-believer, he is there. His Father God wakes you up in the morning. He is there. For those that don't believe in God, he is there. He put food on your table. He gives you breath in your body. He gives you a job, a roof over your head. Even those that are homeless, people that are starving all over the world, God has given angels to answer those prayers for these people. And that comes in the form of us. The ones that have money and can do things. 
to help these people. But you sit back and you hold on to your person so tight. And I can't throw stones at nobody because I do the same thing. To bypass a channel, knowing that these children are hungry. But every time I see somebody out on the road, there was a man sitting in front of Family Dollar last night asking me, do I have a couple of dollars? Thank you, Lord, that you provided a way to give him a few dollars. for so whatever he may need, whatever he do with it, when it passes my hands, it's on him. It's no longer my problem. It's no longer my concern. I did what you asked me to do. And, y'all, we never know how God is going to come before us. He can come before us in the form of one of our enemies. He can come before us in the form of a homeless person, an animal. Whatever it may be, we don't know. The saying is true. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus turn away from you in your time of need? No, he wouldn't. No matter what you might feel about somebody, they may have a million dollars and standing out on the corner asking for another. Give that dollar. And let God handle that. The battle is not yours. It is his. In Jesus' name, it is his. I thank you, God. I thank you, ladies. And until next time, my hey sugar moment. I love y'all. And um a blessed queen that tag send me the questions to it. And I will pass it on. Just like I want to pass on anything else. I want to pass on my love. And I hope you guys can feel it. I hope you receive it. And let it just take upon you. Because y'all, if I could open up my chest right now and just let out how I feel. I got a frog right here in my throat. Because I'm just so full. I thank you, God. Y'all just don't know. We all make mistakes. We all do wrong things in life. But the key to it is to, to think about what you've done. And to ask God to forgive you. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned in Jesus' name. When you talk about people, when you make wrong decisions, when you um, throw stones, whatever it may be, we have a chance to change it. We have a chance to change it. I thank y'all for watching. I love y'all. Bye, scissors.